Hello Libra and welcome to your in-depth forecast for October for the Sun or the Ascendant. Now I'm going to give you an overview of the key strands this month first of all before going on to give you your more detailed analysis. Now the most exciting news is the Sun is going to be combining in your sign with the robust energies of Mars through the first 17 days. And this is also going to take in the new moon in Libra on the 6th of October. This is going to give you a lot of passion, but a lot of desire to really focus on the things that excite you. This can make you more single-minded. Now, of course, Mercury is in retrograde in your sign at the start of the month. So it could be a little bit of a case of two step forwards, one step back. But the overall direction of travel suggests that your willpower is going to be extraordinarily strong. Now there may be some people in your personal situation, your family or home life, that aren't quite as supportive of what you're trying to achieve. So I think that's going to be a key theme of this month. But your ruler Venus is still very positive for finances in the first week. And also we're going to see the unraveling of some of the outer planet retrogrades which have dominated for some months. That's Pluto, Saturn and Jupiter are all set to go forwards. Now if you're new to me or you're yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Also, if you'd like to get your free written daily horoscope from me fired directly to your device each morning, please see underneath this video uh, where you can subscribe. I've been writing these for about 27 years and my work features in Britain's uh, most read newspaper, The Metro. Now also, with year 2022 racing up, if you'd like to get your personal forecast for that year based on your time, date and place of birth, you can order it now and get the rest of year 2021 free, plus a character analysis, plus 30% off. Now, this will give you searing insights to the opportunities that lay ahead, but also help you to steer clear of some pitfalls. So please see the link below, totally unique to you and helps you to ascend above zodiac sign forecasting. But in terms of the detail of this month, so the Sun and Mars together, in a technical sense, Mars is in detriment in your sign. That means it's afflicted. And that's because Mars is the ruling planet of the opposite sign to you, of Aries. But I rather like Mars in the sign of Libra because Libra energy is about balance, equilibrium, fairness, diplomacy, and it's also about articulation because you're an air sign, you're governed by Venus. So to have the extra raw energy of Mars, I think can sometimes help you to reassert your personal agenda and needs. And that can be an important thing to do at times. Because Mercury is in a retrograde through to the 18th, there may be some strands that start to develop and then stall and don't go forwards. And that could lead to a bit of frustration. And as I said before, because your fourth house governed by uh, Capricorn and where the transformational energies of Pluto is, because that's going to bring some testing moments this month, in the, in the square with Mercury in the first five days, the square with the Sun in week three, and from the 17th through to the 26th, as uh, Pluto squares up with Mars, it is possible that someone very close to you could be a little bit obstructive or not quite understanding the urgency that you're feeling to seize your moment to make your mark. But because you have been in your past such a people pleaser, it's essential that you do not feel guilty that this is what you're doing. Ironically, Pluto ends its retrograde also on the time of the new moon, on the 6th. Now generally that's going to be good for you. I think a lot of Libran people, whether it's the Sun, Ascendant, Moon, or any very, very powerfully placed personal planets, 
have really gone through a lot of challenges over the last two or three years, particularly as Saturn and Jupiter also linked with Pluto but squared up your sign. So where you live, how you live there and with whom have all been hot topics. But I think you're moving into a period of your life now where you want to really get cracking on the things that excite you. You still may be making some transitions around where you live or in terms of your inner uh, security or inner personal understanding and development. But the new moon on the 6th does have a bit of a complication on it. Mars alongside the moon can be a little bit unstable because the moon is very much about uh, being very receptive, very nurturing. And of course, because Mars is more rugged in our own sign, it is much more uh, needing of instant gratification. So it can be a bit more impatient. Because Uranus in your house eight, very much to do with deep transformations, is in a quincunx with the new moon, a 150 tense angle. So Mars and Uranus not quite collaborating can create some tension. So I think your desire to be a free spirit could uh, come up against the personal feelings of those you're very connected to, or it may be to do with how you want to be more individual, may have some financial issues, or may see you wanting to assert what you need to do for you in a way which separates you somehow from someone that you have been more allied to in the past. So this new moon could be a new start or see something breaking down where you take much greater power for your future plans. So very exciting, but potentially can create some ripples. Now on the 7th, your ruler Venus moves into the sign of Sagittarius. Quite sociable here. The third house for you, as this is, is very much about everyday communication with neighbours, with siblings, and there may be an opportunity to have some kind of gathering or connection with people, because on the 11th, Saturn follows Pluto in going forwards in your sector of sociability. Now, few people would claim that Saturn is very sociable, but it certainly gives us the structure, helps us to turn up on time and all the rest of it. Uh, but I think it's more because Jupiter also goes forwards in your fifth house of joys on the 18th, but from the 10th through to the 16th, Venus, your ruler, is linking very constructively to the moving forward Saturn. So there can be a conversation that is about your creativity, about your talent or your flair, or romantically, which has a big impact and can be quite exciting and a very meaningful connection. However, on the 18th, Mercury, of course, does end its retrograde. So something that may have felt a bit stuck or not flowing quite at the speed you would like can start to gain momentum. But just be aware, it won't be until the 3rd of November that Mercury emerges from shadow. This means that it gets back to the point where the retrograde uh, reached in its uh, return. So once it gets back to that point, I really feel that something that's very important to you can finally start to see the results you want. However, on the 20th, there is a full moon. And this full moon in your opposite sign of uh, Aries emphasizes your relationships. And if someone hasn't been as supportive as you want because of that fourth house energy in Pluto, I think it could lead to a bit of a tete-a-tete uh, around that time, week three this month, the Sun in a right angle to Pluto can point towards quite serious power issues. And you're wanting to follow your own heart. If someone's encouraging and supportive, this aspect won't show. If you're surrounded by someone who's a blocker or doesn't feel that what you're doing suits their agenda, then that's when uh, something may show itself. But on the 23rd, the Sun moves out of your sign and into Scorpio. In a financial sense, this can be good. I think you can start to see the evidence of the hard work that you've been putting in. But from the 23rd to the 27th, your ruler does go into a square with Neptune. Do you know, if you do meet someone and it's a, a fresh experience and it seems very exciting, with Neptune in your sixth half of sacrifice, uh, the combination between Venus and Neptune can actually be very sweet. And it's possible that you could have 
a quite bewitching experience, but it's also possible that someone could say something or represent themselves in a way which is not completely sincere. So for example, even a friend could promise to do something and then it doesn't actually happen. So sincerity is just something you need to double check at that time. Now from the 17th through to the 26th, as I mentioned before, the two rulers of Scorpio, modern and, and, and traditional, go into battle. Mars square in Pluto. This really is an, an arm wrestle bar none. It really could be a big clashing of wheels here and even a separation from someone if you feel that they're not being fair with you and you know you're so supportive of others so you know a lot of your way of being in your life has been you know to uh, encourage others to enable them and you're becoming much more focused on what you need to do for you which I totally approve of so you know, you may need to push back and it might not be pleasant. So a little bit of a power battle could show itself towards the end of this month. Also, the sun is squaring up with uh, Saturn from the 27th to the 31st. If you are someone who's thinking of doing something more speculative, make sure that you really do your analysis on this because, you know, there could be a little detail that is not clear. And if you are thinking of buying a big ticket item of any kind, I think it should be something that has some kind of functional value to you. If it's just more decorative or more on a whim, I think you could end up with a case of buyer's remorse. But on the 30th, Mars does move out of your sign and into the sign of Scorpio. And between the end of this month and through to the second week of December, don't be surprised if you have a real boost to your finances. Also, your appreciation of the good things in life, whether it's good food or good wine or sensuality, are also going to be enriched. But as long as you can be a little bit disciplined as the sun squares with Saturn, there's going to be loads of opportunities, I feel, to indulge your passion for really nice things. Very few signs have the stylish appreciation of a Libra, you know, whether it's clothes or or to do with um, items for the home, decorative or furnishings, you know, you can have exquisite taste. And I think between the end of this month and the middle of December, all that hard work that you've been pumping into this month and, you know, the energy that the new moon is going to give you can come back to you. But just don't expect everybody close to you or a, a, a matter linked to a property issue. Don't expect that to go without some friction or transitions. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Libra. Thank you so much for joining me. Good luck and goodbye for now.